What's up Internet, IG here again after a bit of a break, back with the highly anticipated release of Elementary OS Luna. So the internet literally exploded when this release finally dropped. And why? Because we've been at two, about two and a bit years of development. We've seen beta releases drop on uh, every couple of months. And now we're sitting with the final release with a bit of a redesigned website and overall a very polished operating system. And you can go and download it now from their website. And I highly recommend that you do. But before you do, check out what I reckon about this operating system because I think it's a very good thing for the Linux ecosystem. All right, so as many a user would testify, Elementary OS is pretty dang gorgeous as far as user interface and user experience is concerned. Uh, the main reason for that is that they want to keep the user interface as simple and as clean and out of your way as possible, while at the same time giving some nice polish on the icons and the theming, etc., making it all look very consistent. And to be honest, they really do a great job here as far as bringing a desktop that has very consistent theming from the boot screen to just playing around with the apps, and a lot of the apps pre-installed also follow these same guidelines. So it lends itself to a very clean system and it's also very quick. Having their own custom Pantheon shell means that they've been able to uh, take care of all the animations themselves, create all of the keyboard shortcuts and create a user experience that is very tailored to what they were specifically after. Now, of course, if any of you remember back two and a bit years ago when Ubuntu 10.10 came out and the elementary team released Jupiter, sort of a stripped back version of Ubuntu 10.10 using most of the same technologies that were already available at the time with their own icon set and their own custom set of applications and tweaks. Now, of course, this system was actually pretty popular because of the fact it was minimalist, but because of the fact it was just borrowing other technology uh, and sort of just tailoring it to the design guidelines that they were after, they were sort of limited in what they were able to pull off. And ultimately, I think most people found it a little bit too limiting as it wasn't really executing the true vision of what the elementary team were looking for. However, with Luna, they've been able to take it to a whole nother level and bring their own custom desktop environment, their own custom login manager, and a lot of custom apps that they've built from scratch to fit in with their design paradigm for what they want elementary OS to be. And for that, I think they deserve some major props. Because really, ever since I started using elementary OS Jupyter, it, it definitely showed great potential, but it wasn't there. Now with Luna, you can definitely see where all of the hard work has been, and the fact that they've released it on a release schedule that is entirely subject to them being happy with the product means that you get a very polished release. So what are some of the things that make elementary OS unique? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, the shell. The desktop environment that you're working with is obviously custom built, custom designed, to fit with their user interface guidelines. You have all your apps show up in the little applications drawer here, and of course you can search and launch just as you would with many other modern desktop environments nowadays. And then of course you have Plank on the bottom here, which just docks your applications and also manages your windows. It works just the way you would expect it to, and it's very simple and clean. The shell is also responsible for a lot of the animations between applications, so when you launch apps, and then switch between them using the alt tab keys, then you can see it fades gently between the windows so you can see which windows are open instead of giving you a dialog box with all of the windows currently open in a list or tile form. And you can see even the plank down the bottom shows you what apps you have open as opposed to showing all of the apps that you have available. Then also when it comes to workspace management, they've also done something kind of similar to what OS X's mission control is, but not quite to the fact that you automatically think they're copying. With simple keyboard shortcuts or even hot corners if you enable them, you can jump between workspaces like this or you can dynamically add more or remove some if you so desire. Then you can also drag apps between those windows or close and open workspaces as you need. So it's a very smooth and fluid process and switching between them is quite easy as well. Again, this isn't going to present you with all of the options of a power desktop like KDE or GNOME, but you're definitely going to find clean set of, a clean set of options here that will tailor to most t users' needs. Now, the second thing that you're going to find about Elementary OS is a lot of apps that you haven't seen before. Now, of course, if you've been using the betas, then you already know what I'm talking about. But for those who are seeing this for the first time, the file manager is their own creation, as is the music app and the calendar app and a whole slew of apps that they've built specifically for this operating system. Some of which aren't installed by default, but you can still go and get them, like screencasting software, Edita, or however you say that, the App Center, the Scratch Text Editor, Snap Photo Booth, and the System Settings Panel. 
Now, to be honest, a lot of these apps do borrow a, a few design elements from OS X, but I think that's a good thing in that OS X has had some great design ideas over the last 10 years or so. So taking the good things from an already good thing and making them better is got to be a win-win situation. They've definitely made this design language their own as far as a very clean user interface with buttons and then a wrench on the side to access any menu options that you might need. Definitely reduces the whole idea of a menu list clutter. And as far as making an operating system that is simple for your grandma to use, I think they are very successful. Then some of the apps that are here aren't exactly custom to elementary OS, but they definitely adhere to the elementary design guidelines and so they include them in. Such as Midori, they're uh, the default web browser that you get installed with Luna. It's a very quick web browser and to the best of my knowledge, it's been very, very stable. It works exactly the way you would think it should with an omnibar bookmarking and basic web browsing needs. Think of it as the Safari of elementary OS. Basic and quick, but not a huge support for extensions and add-ons. For basic web browsing, it's, very ni it's a very nice experience. Then you also have Geary, the mail client, which I have reviewed before and I'll throw a link in the description below, which is a very nice email client that again, very minimalist presentation, gets you straight to the content with minimal fuss in between. Then they also use Shotwell, which is the default photo manager for a lot of Linux distributions nowadays. And Shotwell is a very nice photo manager as far as the design elements and they've, and Elementary have worked very closely with Yorba, the creator of both Shotwell and Geary email client to, uh, to really polish these up to the standard that the Elementary team have been happy with it. It's also worth mentioning that for a modern distribution, Elementary has got to be one of the smallest downloads out there in that you barely scrape over 700 megs so it can easily fit on a single s CD as opposed to most of the other releases out there now which at least are going to cost you a, a gig and sometimes more than that. So the main benefits that you're going to get from using a system like this is the fact that it is very fast. When you're not running anything else like the screen capturing that I'm chugging through at the moment, it is a very speedy desktop and you can fly between multitasking and loading apps and with the addition of preload which is installed by default in elementary it will load a lot of the commonly used applications into the ram so you can pull them up much quicker as time goes on by the way if you want to know where a lot of these wallpapers come from the ones from about here down are default with elementary but then the ones from here up most of them are from the elementary update ppa which i'm going to talk about in a little bit i'll also throw links down below for anybody who wants to get their hands on these because they are very 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 nice wallpapers now as it is based on ubuntu 1204 there is the long-term support release and it also means that you are running a slightly older operating system as a base. This is not really a problem in that most modern hardware out there hasn't really changed too much from what it was when Ubuntu 12.04 dropped. However, if you do want an updated kernel, then there is a way to do that. And again, elementaryupdate.com has some great details on that. So as a platform that is gradually evolving and taking over as far as a lot of Linux users are concerned, I think Elementary has really proven themselves with this Lunar release. They've definitely shown to the world what a dedicated team of designers and developers can pull off. And it's the sort of thing that I would definitely want to show off to anybody who is interested in a system other than Windows and Mac. So at the end of the day, should you give this a try? Emphatically, yes. If you find yourself despairing at the fragmentation of the Linux ecosystem and the different design languages and the different theming and all of that, then you're definitely going to find yourself at home here in elementary in that all of the apps that come pre-installed look very nice and they look like they belong in the system. And then all the apps that don't, chances are the community has already found a way to make them fit in with the elementary design ethos. So I guess the question on everybody's mind is, is this something that you are going to run or indeed something that I'm going to run as an everyday system? For the moment, yes. And basically it all comes down to the things that I've already mentioned in this video thus far. But it just feels like an operating system that's designed to get stuff done. Uh, but it's, it's, it's done in such a well thought out way that it, it makes sense to use it. There are a few little bits and pieces that I've sort of been patching onto it as I go, filling needs that I have. but. Definitely check out elementaryupdate.com because they have a great set of uh, tutorials and uh, sort of extensions that you can bolt onto elementary OS that still keeps in with the design and sort of the theming of elementary, but giving some uh, more functionality and some cool little tools and tweaks along the way. So let me know about what you think of Elementary's latest in the comments section below because obviously uh, the internet has been waiting a long time for this. We'll try to be getting back to a pretty regular schedule now so you can look forward to more explained videos coming up as well as more Linux distro reviews, maybe a few more Android app reviews as well. 
So definitely click the thumbs up if you like this video, and if you want to see more of these videos on a regular basis, then feel free to subscribe either up there or down there somewhere. Links for anything that I've talked about will be found in the description box below, and feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.